So this is the current state of the checklist maker for the Dine and Sky View. Um, <clears throat> when I first tested it, I built the normal operating procedures chapter of the RV12 uh, operating handbook, pilot's operating handbook. I've since done uh, performance and um, emergency procedures. Uh, emergency procedures really pointed out the utility of this tool. So it's a very complicated chapter and there's a lot of freeform text. Uh, now there is uh, something of a limitation on the Skyview checklists. You can only have one file loaded at a time. Uh, what I have been doing is creating a file per chapter in the POH. Uh, to do otherwise, the thing would be so lengthy, it would take forever to scroll down through it just to get to the meat of what you wanted. Uh, and that's still the situation with the emergency procedures because it's so damn big. Uh, so I'm gonna open the emergency procedures file and you can see the complexity of this, um, particularly in areas like this, where there's a lot of just on and on and on text. And uh, some of them are just items. Um, some of them I don't, didn't do. There we go. Lots and lots of text on that. And that's where this tool really comes in handy. It's this add multi-line item where I can type in as much text as I want. And when I save it, it'll put in all the line breaks to force it into either a 40 character line, which is all I'm doing. I'm not doing the 31 character lines. It's too much work uh, to truncate all that stuff. Um, but it'll just break them into lines. And the only weakness of it is once it gets in here, they are individual lines. And I'm too lazy to write the code that would, uh, you know, you'd select multiple lines. It would gather them all up, reform the paragraph, put it in that edit window. I'll probably have to do that at some point because it's kind of painful to work on them a line at a time. But in any event, there's the, uh, there's the emergency procedures chapter. So I'm on my way out to the hangar. I've, I have seen the normal operating procedures in the sky view. I have not seen this in the sky view yet. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do here in just a few minutes. It's a rainy day. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to fly it uh, and do it in the air and see what, how it works in the air, but I will be able to do it in the hangar, so that's coming up next. So this is winter in central Ohio, and you're thinking, you're saying the same thing everybody says. You know, they look at this. I mean, the yards are flooding. It's just nasty out. And they'll say, well, it could be worse. It could be snowing. And while that's true, uh, that's all I've got to say on that, really. <laughs> I just hate this time of year. And this is the airport road, so you know you got the beacon is lit because it's solid IFR, I mean, it's well below minimums even on the ILS. So this is why I don't fly much in the winter. Uh, it's depressing to come out here. It's actually depressing to come outside at all. I, I absolutely hate the winter. But it is what it is. So we're coming up to the gate, and uh, I'll get the airplane lit up here in a few minutes, and we'll look at these checklists. So. Okay, here we are. I don't care about that right now. Um, Bear with me because I never remember how to do this. Uh, I've only just now started using these. I think I need to go screen and I need to turn off, uh, generally I turn off the PFD and the EMS because I might be, uh, well actually I only need to turn off one of them, don't I? I just turn off the PFD, there we go. And that gives me the 40% screen and then I believe the checklist I have in it now is normal ops and you go to tools, checklist, and there it is. And then, so pre-start, let's say we want to roll down, you twist the knob to roll down through items. Um, so let's look at engine start, push the knob to the right, and that brings up the items. And then this again, will scroll through. There's all the freeform text that I made such a big deal out of. And then you get down to your actual items. These little arrows right there are because uh, the developers at Dynon will eat any kind of leading spaces. Any white space you put before, like the word throttle to indent it, it'll eat it and it'll just all left justify. So I've been using those little arrows. I think on the, um, on the emergency procedure, I used asterisks or something just to highlight that this is an action item and not just normal text. So as far as loading a new file, I always forget how to do this too. I do believe I'm gonna go to set up, which is these right two buttons. I'm gonna look at, let's see, is there load file system software? That's probably not what I want. Uh, where do you load these things? Let's see, load files, data diagnostic file, uh, installed databases, maybe that's it. Uh, aviation database, no, that's not it. Uh, I'm gonna hunt around till I can find this again. Um, and then show you how to load a file. 
Okay, I was on the right track. Uh, I haven't done the software update and it found it on the memory stick and I'm not going to do it right now because it takes a while. You want to go to load files, that's down with the stick, then right with the stick, and then here's the list of files and the one I want to bring in is emergency procedures. So I'm going to hit uh, load and yes, I'm sure, well, <laughs> I'm more or less sure. Operations can be successfully, so done. And then we get exit out of here. And there it is, there's your general checklist. Uh, so let's look what's in general. It's just a warning. Um, switch with engine running except, okay, that one's kind of botched. There's a warning that says don't turn off the, um, don't turn off the master switch with the engine running. And apparently a few lines got lost on that one. So that's, that's just cleanup work. Uh, engine fired during start. Here it is. If the fire is believed to be confirmed, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it just goes on down and down and down. And some of these got quite extensive. Um, I know, I think I had to skip voltage regulator failure because it was just paragraphs and paragraphs of text. And it was for the silent heck tech uh, voltage regulator, which I don't think I have. Uh, so that one for now, I'm leaving blank, but the rest of these are done. So you got electrical fire situations, what to do about that. Um, engine failure on takeoff, which is a tricky one. Yeah, you got lots of things to worry about with that. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Go. So the one I finished today was the performance checklist, and we'll load that one up. Uh, I was, what do they call it? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was called performance. So I'm going to go back to load files. Uh, over here, down here, down one. There we go. Over here, and I'm looking for performance. There it is. So we're going to load that one. Yes, I'm sure. We're done. So get out of that. And let's get out of this. And here is takeoff and performance climb. There we go. This is takeoff and climb performance at gross weight, 1,320 pounds. This, and again, because I can't indent, I had to put, you know, normally they had like sea level just once or 2,000 feet just once and nice and centered, but I can't do that uh, because they eat the leading spaces. But this is still quite handy. So if I'm at gross weight, uh, my field is about 905 feet. So I'll be halfway between sea level and 1,000. So I have to interpolate. Um, let's say I was out flying on a typical summer day around here, which is about 80 degrees. Uh, so 831 foot per minute climb, which is not bad. Uh, about six, a little more than 1,500 feet of the runway to cross a 50 foot obstacle. 800 feet. I've got a 5,000 foot runway here. <laughs> so honestly, I need about a quarter of it, um, if that. So 20% maybe. But this is interesting. If you get your gross weight and you get down here, let's say you're in Leadville, Colorado or some crazy place like that, at 6,000 feet or even higher at 8,000 feet uh, it's pretty much at 100 degrees and 8,000 feet you really ought to just stay home it's not going to climb it's going to take most of your average runway if not more so these are interesting numbers um, and it's handy to have this on here also I can I can move back with moving the stick to the left it'll take me down to um, basically just me performance and these are numbers I'm quite used to I fly alone quite a bit uh, let's say I'm, um, let's even use the 2,000 foot numbers, let's say we got a little bit of density altitude, which does happen. Uh, on a normal day, um, say about 80 degrees, I'm getting close to, eight, I'm over 850 foot per minute climb, which is just like a rocket. I'm off the ground in 751 feet, which is, I mean, that's the numbers painted on a runway. But in any event, uh, I did copy cruise performance over here as well, because it's a nice place to have it. So really the only thing there's a couple things that i don't really like about it uh one is that you lose your screens uh, i could actually have ems no ems is when it goes to 31 so you do have to have just one screen um so there is that uh the other thing is that i can only have one file loaded at a time there's there's only one level i can have a chapter and then verse i can't have a book and then chapter 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 verse 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 so other than that oh good i, I brought that with me too i'm gonna update the data today um memory stick is a wonderful thing uh, other than that it's quite useful um, I have not used it in flight you've seen me use it uh, I think on takeoff now and then when I haven't flown for I'll do the pre takeoff checklist which uh, I'm gonna add a couple of uh, check canopy latch things to it uh, right now it's pretty much verbatim out of the uh, vans provided RV 12 pilot operating handbook um, but it's custom to me I can change it in any way I want through practice and the performance things uh, don't much matter. Uh, gross weight in 10,000 feet or 8,000 feet is never going to happen. Uh, I live in Ohio. It's very low, very flat. Um, cruise performance I use a lot, which is why I put it into normal ops. I just want to know what kind of gas I'm burning and such for. So that made a lot of sense to me. The emergency procedures, 
really aren't uh, of the nature where the engine quits and you can load the emergency procedure file, find the engine out thing, read through it. There's a book of text in there. It's not really an emergency quick reference handbook kind of checklist. What it is, is prior to takeoff, sitting at the end of the runway, once every six months or so, I should probably read power loss on takeoff or things like that just to keep up with them. Because there are subtle things in there you might not think of. Uh, <clears throat> there was one, how to fly it without the stabilator, if the trim tab falls off or if the stab falls off. Here's how you can do it with the flaps. Uh, pulling up the flaps will push the nose down, yada, yada, yada. Not much I'm willing to try, <laughs> but I, I think it's good to be familiar with. So. This is the current state of the thing. Um, I'm probably not gonna do much more with it. I've got the checklist files that I personally want. Uh, I have a shared folder on my Google Drive. If anybody wants to grab the application, it has a setup routine now, just like any other Windows app. You double click on the MSI file and it installs it. Um, the documentation has fallen behind of some fixes I made, some usability fixes when I actually really started using it. Uh, so I'll probably touch that up. But if anybody wants this thing, uh, I'll put, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and put it in the comments or in the, the description of this video, uh, a link to um, the Google Drive where it's all stored. I don't know that I'll remain, if that'll remain public forever. I may want to shut that down after a while if I, if for whatever reason it starts to become a problem for me uh, because it really is all about me. Uh, but other than that, um, here it is. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. Um, I built it because I wanted to. Uh, I'm having trouble working on it because I built it two years ago and it's been a long time since I've written code. <laughs> and I got in there and said, wow, how in the hell does this thing work? <laughs> True story. Uh, but in any event, here it is. I'm going to wrap this up uh, and go play in the ring. Bye-bye.